when I give my talks, one question I get asked all the time, pretty much guarantee at most talks, is what do you do with all that fruit? So when they find out I've got like 70 varieties of apple, 20 varieties of plum, 10 varieties of damson and bullis, 10 varieties of gooseberry, I've just ordered 20 varieties of pear, people were like, well, what are you gonna do with all that fruit? And what they're looking at it completely wrong, because what they're looking at is on a good year when you've got loads of fruit, what are you gonna do with it? Which is a fair enough question, but I look on it as the absolute worst year, I might have just enough. This year is case in point in that, my apple trees are pretty bare, but I've had a couple of trees out of the kind of number of varieties I've got here that have cropped quite well. And that might mean that they didn't crop very well last year, but having lots of different varieties kind of really hedges your bets on kind of self-sufficiency. So I know that, okay, this is normally one of my best trees. This is Scotch Bridget. And this is the one I can keep till June, quite often in a good year. I've got some higher up. But down below, we've got hardly any fruit at all. You see how perfect that fruit is. But having a, a, like a big spread kind of gives me a much better opportunity of getting something. And I think apples and pears are a really good example of this as well. Normally, this isn't a good example this year, but normally if you have a bad apple year, you quite often get a good pear year. Now last year seemed to be good on apples and pears. And what it's done is it's kind of tired the trees out and they've all kind of, the ones that cropped heavily last year are having a bit of a break by the looks of it. And I can't blame on that. I've had about four pears from my plot off about five 10 year old trees. And my apple racks, I'm going to go fill half of them from here. But I have got some apple trees at my mum and dad's as well, which I can s liberate. So this year is kind of like, I want to make sure I make the most of all my fruit and save as much as I can. So it goes into my stores, it'll get preserved in different ways. In a good year, what I tend to do is preserve loads, loads more. So we're still eating apples from three years ago. If you've got kind of dehydrated apples, they rehydrate great and you can cook them or you can eat them as snacks. My diabetic daughter can even use them as hypo treatment to bring her blood glucose back up. So it's really handy to have this ingredient and you deal with the gluts when you've got the gluts. And on the lean years then, hopefully you've got enough to kind of see you through and hope it's not too many lean years in a row. We're very much in apple growing territory. Apples grow all round here, we're surrounded by orchards. So by growing so much fruit, I'm kind of playing to my strengths of the land really. And also knowing that, you know, it's kind of low effort. You can grow a lot of fruit. And some years you can do literally nothing with it other than say prune your trees. and know you're gonna get a harvest from it. So it's a very different from vegetables. With vegetables it's kind of constant effort, um, kind of constantly putting the work in. Whereas fruit isn't, you know, fruit is, you plant the trees, you do have a big investment at the start. You know, you've got to buy your trees, you've got to plant them, you've got to prepare your ground. And then you've got to look after your trees, you've got to prune them every year, but it's, it's kind of low effort from there on in, I think. But high return. I don't think, if I look around here, that there isn't one tree that hasn't paid its money back. There might be one over there, which has never cropped very well, and I might rip that one out this year seems very disease ridden. It's probably meant for a more kind of intensive orchard, maybe with sprays and things like that than what mine is. Mine's completely organic with chickens kind of foraging around the bottom. But I don't think there's a single tree here that hasn't paid back its investment of what I paid for the tree. Um, especially when you look at bags of apples, you know, six apples for two pound or whatever, or one pound 50 in the supermarkets at the moment. It doesn't take many apples to you in the back. Even my cordon trees. So I had one cordon tree this year that was laden. A lot of them didn't have much on, but I got a few trays fulls from them. But the one was absolutely laden. That's probably 10 quid worth of apples off that. That's literally paid off for that tree, you know. But this is year 10, so, or year nine. So it's, it's definitely done that multiple times over. It's not just the fruit that you benefit from as well. You get, you know, it is just a beautiful thing to grow, an apple tree and fruit trees in general. So what I've done now is I've ordered 20 pear trees, all different varieties, and I'm gonna grow them as vertical cordons, or super columns, I think they call them, which you prune in the summer, much like my apple tree cordons. I'm gonna grow them in a little strip over here. 
your advantage with loads of different varieties is you can figure out what ones work really well for your land. So the one I've got over there obviously doesn't work very well um, here. It's never cropped very good. Only had a few apples off it, which the chickens have eaten because they're covered in scab. Whereas you can see the Scotch Bridget, every Scotch Bridget I'm getting off this tree at the moment seems just to be perfect, which is ideal for storing. So you can work out those varieties. I've got some varieties that are named for this area. You know, there is a Herefordshire Russet I've got over there. There's a Pitmaston's Pineapple, which is from Worcestershire, which isn't very far away at all. So you kind of, you, you've got them specific to your area. That's the one beautiful thing about, you know, stepping away from the supermarket varieties. There's, you know, they're, they're, they're designed for certain things. Um, this is a bit of a frost pocket here, so I need a little bit hardier ones. But you know, you can look around and you can find the right apples to suit your, your space. And the same with pears and with gooseberries and things like that. And obviously there's taste. You know, every apple tastes different. You've got all different flavors and varieties. I've got Ergamont Russet over there, which is one of my favorites, but actually I've got a Rosemary Russet right the way over there, which knocks spots off that one, to be honest with you, but it's a lesser known apple. But if I hadn't grown them, I'd never get to try them because in the supermarket, they're just sold as russet apples, if you can find them at all. So the bad year, I might have just enough fruit, but in a good year, I can let it rot on the ground if it comes to it. My minimum benchmark of fruit is plan for the worst year, then the best years are a bonus. 